the talk about angels. As they journeyed up the hills from Jericho to Bethany, Nathanael walked most of the way by the side of Jesus, and their discussion of children in relation to the kingdom of heaven led indirectly to the consideration of the ministry of angels. Nathanael finally asked the master this question. Seeing that the high priest is a Sadducee, and since the Sadducees do not believe in angels, what shall we teach the people regarding the heavenly ministers? Then, among other things, Jesus said, The angelic hosts are a separate order of created beings. They are entirely different from the material order of mortal creatures, and they function as a distinct group of universe intelligences. Angels are not of that group of creatures called the sons of God in the scriptures. Neither are they the glorified spirits of mortal men who have gone on to progress through the mansions on high. Angels are a direct creation, and they do not reproduce themselves. The angelic hosts have only a spiritual kinship with the human race. As man progresses in the journey to the Father in Paradise, he does traverse a state of being at one time analogous to the state of the angels, but mortal man never becomes an angel. The angels never die, as man does. The angels are immortal unless, perchance, they become involved in sin, as did some of them with the deceptions of Lucifer. The angels are the spirit servants in heaven, and they are neither all-wise nor all-powerful. But all of the royal angels are truly pure and holy. And do you not remember that I said to you once before that, if you had your spiritual eyes anointed, you would then see the heavens opened, and behold the angels of God ascending and descending. It is by the ministry of the angels that one world may be kept in touch with other worlds. For have I not repeatedly told you that I have other sheep not of this fold? And these angels are not the spies of the spirit world, who watch upon you and then go forth to tell the Father the thoughts of your heart, and to report on the deeds of the flesh. The Father has no need of such service, inasmuch as his own spirit lives within you. But these angelic spirits do function to keep one part of the heavenly creation informed concerning the doings of other and remote parts of the universe. And many of the angels, while functioning in the government of the Father and the universes of the sons, are assigned to the service of the human races. When I taught you that many of these seraphim are ministering spirits, I spoke not in figurative language nor in poetic strains. And all this is true, regardless of your difficulty in comprehending such matters. Many of these angels are engaged in the work of saving men, for have I not told you of the seraphic joy when one soul elects to forsake sin and begin the search for God? I did even tell you of the joy in the presence of the angels of heaven over one sinner who repents, thereby indicating the existence of other and higher orders of celestial beings who are likewise concerned in the spiritual welfare and with the divine progress of mortal man. Also are these angels very much concerned with the means whereby man's spirit is released from the tabernacles of the flesh and his soul escorted to the mansions in heaven. Angels are the sure and heavenly guides of the soul of man during that uncharted and indefinite period of time which intervenes between the death of the flesh and the new life in the spirit of Odes. And he would have spoken further with Nathaniel regarding the ministry of angels, but he was interrupted by the approach of Martha, who had been informed that the master was drawn near to Bethany by friends who had observed him ascending the hills to the east, and she now hastened to greet him.